Hey folks, Carl Kischel here and welcome to this week's edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. So this is the week after Microsoft build. There are a lot of announcements last week and actually quite a few announcements this week in terms of what's new with the Microsoft Cloud. So this week we're going to cover Azure Sentinel pricing changes, how to detect credential leaks, enabling trusted launch capabilities, the new Azure Maps Creator being available, and much, much more. So with that, let's jump into it. All of the links for this week's updates you can find in the description of the video. So our first announcement is regarding some new pricing changes with Azure Sentinel and also the monitor Azure Monitor Log Analytics. So good news here for those of you who are using Sentinel. If you're not familiar with Azure Sentinel, it is a native cloud-based scene. So it is a solution that collects log information from all of your security endpoints, both within and beyond the Microsoft platform. It uh, uses AI and um, other signaling and tool sets to provide you with up-to-date information regarding security events within your cloud and also on-prem environment. So it covers both. Regarding the pricing changes, if you scroll down here, it talks about some of the new commitment tiers that are available, um, et cetera. I think the, the biggest announcement here regarding cost is with the um, any kind of overage within a particular commitment tier. So if you're in a commitment tier and uh, say that's a 500 megabyte, I'm sorry, 500 gigabytes per day, and you go beyond that, Previously, you were charged at the two gig per day rate if you were to go over that commitment. Um, however, you'll continue to still be billed at the effective rate for that commitment tier, which is currently 80 cents a gigabyte. So great news there for some cost savings with Azure Sentinel. What's new? Detecting credential leaks using some of the notebooks that are now available for Azure Sentinel. So speaking of Azure Sentinel, uh, the product group has released some new notebooks, which are basically pre-packaged uh, workflows, um, scripts, etc., to help you leverage various components within Azure. These notebooks are focused on log analytics and Azure Sentinel. So this particular blog post talks about detecting credential leaks and how you can use Sentinel and these, built new, these new notebooks to detect these leaks. And um, so if you're not familiar with credential leaks, these could be passwords that might be hidden in configuration files, um, database credentials that are stored elsewhere within your cloud environment. Maybe they're not properly stored, et cetera. The, uh, the notebooks allow you to do scanning for credentials within your environment. It covers both a cloud and on-prem. So if you're a Sentinel user, check out the link on how to leverage these notebooks. There are some updates here regarding Azure Security Center and a public preview wanted to bring to your attention. So in this particular link, it gives you recommendations how to enable the trusted launch capabilities within the Azure platform. If you're not familiar with um, Trusted Launch, it's a facility for your virtual machines um, that allows you to, well, actually allows the system to validate that that virtual machine has not been compromised from the, the bootloader, uh, startup sequences, operating system, et cetera. So it ensures that the machine has not been compromised. It's still within the bounds of how it was originally created. And the, the public preview and this particular documentation explains how to enable this. Um, unfortunately, as a heads up, this is only for net new virtual machines. So there's no way to retrofit the uh, trusted launch capability as we currently speak with existing VMs. So these would be for new VMs. Nevertheless, something to check out if you want to increase the security of your virtual machines. Azure Maps Creator is now available within the Azure platform. So yes, this is a mapping tool that is now available. It's generally available, so complete production here. Uh, and this 
blog post gets into the details on how to leverage the map creator. And uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, if you go through it, if you might be familiar with other map creation tools, et cetera, not really anything new, but I think the, the value prop here, if we were to scroll down, is the ability to leverage some of the cognitive services capabilities that are built into Azure with the map. So for example, if you mapped out a particular building, uh, conference rooms area with using Azure Maps and leveraging IoT, you can do real-time analysis on occupation of those rooms, uh, traffic analytics, et cetera. So something definitely to check out if you wanted to not only build out maps with Azure Maps Creator, but also get into some very interesting solutions on monitoring the facilities within your campus, organization, and company. Initial access authentication is now in public preview. So this is a new feature built into the Azure Active Directory platform and uh, it gives you conditional access authentication within a particular context. And this context could be, for example, um, maybe you had a high profile application or uh, a series of security steps, et cetera, that you wanted to revalidate or reauthenticate the user. You can enable MFA, for example, for this particular scenario. So maybe um, you have a finance worker and they normally work with Excel and some other applications, but occasionally they go into a very high profile or highly sensitive application. And you just want to ensure that, hey, they are who they are who's accessing that application. You can enforce something like MFA or other uh, validation methods using this new feature. So check out the public preview for more info. Office scripts now generally available. So this is specific to Microsoft Excel. And scrolling down here, you'll see that this is a new facility within Excel uh, where you would use an action recorder to record actions, steps, etc. So is it like a macro? Yeah, kind of similar to, to macro, but it's, what it's leveraging is Power Automate behind the scenes to not only look at elements within an Excel spreadsheet, but also beyond an Excel spreadsheet. If you're copying data, for example, back and forth from one location to another, uh, et cetera. So if you're currently licensed for Office 365, either A3 or E3 or higher, you have access to this new capability called Office Scripts. There's a new improved and intuitive sharing experience coming to Microsoft 365. And this would be specific to Teams, OneDrive, and SharePoint. So the blog post gets into details on some of the background information and what the product group has gone through regarding research and enhancing the file sharing experience within the Microsoft 365 applications. So it goes through all the details. It's a fairly long blog post. Um, one of the more interesting areas that I thought was of particular interest was around this new facility called Quick Permissions. And this will allow you to, to share um, directly within a particular dialog box. So the dialog box has changed. Your end users are going to see a slight change in the sharing experience with some new enhanced features and capabilities to make this a little bit easier to use. So check out the blog post for all the details on what exactly these changes are and how to leverage them in your environment. Defender for Endpoint for Linux coming soon to Azure Defender. So lots of defenders there. A lot of you are familiar with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint uh, for Linux devices. So that's available for Linux, Windows, of course, and Macs. So that's Windows Defender. And that is the antivirus, anti-malware um, security tool set for those particular endpoints. Azure Defender is an enhanced capability that is now coming soon for Linux devices. So think of Azure Defender as kind of a, an EDR solution for your endpoints. So we're regular Defender, Microsoft Defender, 
focuses on preventing infiltration, malware, et cetera, at your endpoints. Azure Defender assumes breach within these endpoints and continuously scans and monitors the endpoints for nefarious activities, um, issues, compromises, et cetera. So the, the blog post gets into all the details on what will be coming, uh, which is coming within the next couple of weeks, actually. And uh, a good FAQ in terms of licensing, does it cover servers, et cetera. So all the details here in the link to the description. Now available is a new version of Microsoft Bookings. So you may have already seen this in your tenant. If not, you should see it shortly. So this is really a complete redesign and enhancement of Microsoft Bookings. If you're not familiar with Bookings, it gives you the uh, facility solution and capability to book various elements within your organization. These could be rooms, they could be, it could be equipment, it could be people, uh, et cetera. So a lot of different um, functions. Scrolling down here through the list of all the new changes, I'm going to highlight some of the more interesting things that are available now. So there's this concept now of bookings admins who now can control more of the organization's compliance and privacy standards. So you can restrict appointments to particular users, uh, restrict search engine listings, et cetera. So there's some new admin capabilities and there are also some new roles within the environment. So that these new roles are a team member, scheduler. Um, in addition to that, all the roles are here, administrator, scheduler, viewer, guest. So some uh, cool enhancements there in terms of the, the new role-based assignments and some also additional enhancements regarding customization and branding of your bookings platform. So a lot of great enhancements to bookings. The product continues to be uh, reiterated and um, iterated, as the case may be, with new functionality. So this is not all. There are going to be additional things and elements coming to Microsoft Bookings later this month. Check out the link for all the details on the new bookings. Migrating content from Box, Dropbox, and Google Workspace into Microsoft 365. So many of you already know that there are tools provided within the Microsoft uh, platform that allow you to do migrations from these other services into Microsoft 365. This new release and enhancement focuses more on doing migrations into a SharePoint environment from Box, Dropbox, and Google Workspace. And the enhancements here help maintain structure, folder structure, Etc. So um, other than that, there's some uh, smaller changes to the UI that you may want to be aware of um, and links on how to leverage these migration tools. Um, if you're Office 365, Microsoft 365 user today, you have access to these tools at no additional cost. Check out the link for further details. Using Microsoft Defender for identity to make powerful advanced hunting queries. So this blog post was pretty interesting. It focuses on the Microsoft Defender for Identity solution. Uh, that is available as part of your A5 or E5 Microsoft 365 suite. It could also be purchased a la carte. Um, Defender for Identity just does just that. It monitors all the identities within your environment and helps protect them by making sure those identities and folks who are logged in are authenticated using the identities within your environment are not performing nefarious acts within your environment. So uh, with this new tool set, you can create additional hunting queries to further kind of dig into your environment to see if anyone's actually doing any particular uh, action against um, your endpoints, your systems, et cetera. If you scroll down here, I wanted to just kind of point out what I thought was super interesting, which was in regards to tracking Active Directory changes. So this covers the Microsoft Defender for Identity, covers both on-prem and cloud-based services. And for that extra help in making sure 
your um, authenticated users, authenticated objects are doing things that they should be doing and shouldn't be and not doing things they shouldn't be doing. Uh, there's some really good uh, sample queries here on how to pull your domain controllers for things like remote code execution, changes to attributes to Active Directory objects, uh, et cetera. So if you're into security and you uh, want to roll up your sleeves and do a little bit more with Microsoft Defender for Identity, check out this blog post. And last but not least, introducing question answering and public preview. So the Q&A maker is part of Azure Cognitive Services. It allows you to create very simple bots that run off of a, a Q&A uh, example based off an FAQ or you know, question and answer pairs that you predefined. And uh, it's, it's pretty good technology for simple bot making and the uh, Q&A maker to help create bots. This new enhancement um, actually goes beyond the, the question and answer pairing and gets into unstructured documents. So you can funnel information into Q&A maker around unstructured data and information uh, to help your bot in your Q&A session better answer questions. So there's an example here where you can feed it a document and within the document, you know, there's a price for a particular headset and there's a lot of other information within this document. And as you can see, there's no kind of Q&A pairing here. It's, a, it's an unstructured document with a lot of data. And if you were to ask the bot, for example, what is the price of the uh, particular item, it would kind of know through natural querying language what you're looking for and provide that information or that pertinent information as part of that unstructured document. So really good uh, opportunity here to dig into bot creation and some of the new features within Q&A Maker. That concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to be involved and notified on these weekly updates when I publish them, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification button within YouTube uh, for the channel. If you have any questions, I can be found on LinkedIn at Carl Kishel or on Twitter um, or drop a comment in the comments box. I read all the comments and reply back to all the feedback. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I wish you well. Have a great week and we will catch you next time. Take care.